is it time to let Prince rest? Hey everybody, welcome back to Princess Friend, exploring music through Prince. Make sure to follow us on social media at Princess Friend YT on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and subscribe to the channel, hitting the bell notification so you always know when we put out new videos. So recently there was an article put out that kind of caused some controversy, um, which was pretty interesting. It was put out by John Shipley at TwinCities.com, and the title is John Shipley, It's Time to Let Prince Rest in Peace. So I'm going to read you the article and then we're going to discuss. Okay, Minnesota, we need to talk about Prince. It's time to let the man rest in peace. In the last full week of April alone, there were 15 Prince-related events one could attend in the greater Twin Cities, from the tribute pub crawl to last weekend's celebration 2019 in Paisley Park Studio, where regular ticket cost $549 and a VIP ticket was $1,049. There's a fine line between heartfelt tribute and brazen cash grab, and the Rubicon has been and crossed. Since his untimely death on April 21st, 2016, a cottage industry has sprung up around the iconic classic and famously private musician. Wherever Prince is right now, it's hard to believe he likes what he sees. It's one thing to honor a man's memory and another entirely to include him in your business model. Minnesota's sports teams were quick to honor Prince and rightly so. He is a mammoth part of the state's identity, a genius who personally broke music barriers with hit records, then wrote hit records for acts as disparate as Sheila E., The Bangles, and Sinead O'Connor. Further, he chose to stay here, and boy, do we like that. It's impossible to overestimate what Prince means to Minnesota. So naturally, the summer after Prince's death, the Saints wore purple jerseys for a couple of games, and the Twins had their first Prince night giving away legitimately cool hats at the gates. In the fall, the Wild changed their goal song, albeit briefly, to Let's Go Crazy. The Vikings had a video tribute before a game, and the Lynx, who Prince whom Prince feted with a private party after their 2015 WNBA title, wore purple shoes during a playoff game. Then it just kept going and finally got weird when Prince had a holographic performance at the Super Bowl in the U.S. Bank Stadium February 4th, 2018. Last fall, the Timberwolves broke out an alternate Prince-inspired uniform as their officially licensed NBA City Edition gear. On June 14th, the Twins will give purple jerseys to the first 10,000 through the Target Field gates on the team's third annual Prince Night, and you can get a hat if you buy a special package that costs between $28 and $97. Look, the running leap at Prince's money didn't start with Minnesota sports teams. Within days of his deaths from an accidental over dose of painkillers, nearly 50 would-be heirs started filing papers to get some of the estate worth an estimated $200 million. Since then, Prince's Paisley Park studio in Chanhassen has become a tourist destination, VIP tour $100, bucks, and licensing his image has become big business. Obviously, our teams are working with the estate here, but it's time to give it a rest. Prince was a basketball player and fan, and certainly shared a relationship with the Lynx and Timberwolves. These are natural. Few would begrudge the local WNBA team. No one is suggesting Prince didn't enjoy center stage or have a healthy sense of his own genius. He was hardly a household word when he convinced investors to get behind an autobiographical movie in which he played the lead. The movie grossed almost $80 million on release and won him an Oscar. That's what the old timers call moxie. But he was also rarely seen in public and protective of his work, constantly recording but only releasing relative handfuls of songs. This is a guy who changed his name to a glyph just to get out of a record deal. How do you suppose he'd feel about seeing it on the Vikings jersey? It just doesn't feel right anymore. Okay, so so that's the whole article, and it was a little long, and I apologize for that. But I think it's interesting to get the context that John Shipley was going for here. So then the question is, is he right? He is kind of focusing on the sports teams here and that the sports teams need to shut up, I guess, about their love of Prince. They need to stop giving away things. They need to stop parading Prince around because Prince was private. Okay, I guess I can kind of see that point of view, but I think that that's only true if your point of reference is the fact that he convinced investors to invest in Purple Rain. I honestly think that John Shipley makes a few good points here. There is a point where it's going too far. 
kind of like with the Capital One commercials. But I honestly don't mind sports teams showing their respect for their local legend. I don't mind Paisley Park being a museum since that's what Prince wanted. Prince started those tours. I don't mind a lot of the things going on, but of course, I'm only one person's opinion. I think for me though, it was the next to last paragraph that really, really irked me. And it made me see this article from the point of view of somebody who probably never really listened to Prince. And here's that section again, just in case you didn't hear it when I read it originally. But he was also rarely seen in public and protective of his work, constantly recording, but only releasing relative handfuls of songs. Relative handfuls of songs? You mean the album a year and sometimes multiple albums a year that he would release? That's the problem that I have with this article. It seems ill-informed and it seems unresearched. I can also see why some people might think of these things as cash grabs, but even in his own words, he's saying that they're giving things away. I mean, and they might be saying we're wearing Prince outfits on the court. But is anybody going to go see the basketball game because the team is wearing purple? I doubt it. They might go for the giveaway of the purple jersey, but you also notice that they're giving it away. Showing respect for Prince and the impact that he had on the city and on our culture and on the world is not a bad thing. I can understand why it might seem odd because nobody really was talking about Prince before he died. And that's honestly a sad thing because what's happening now is the world is overcompensating. So it feels weird to those people who never really heard Prince his name before he died. But all of us Prince friends in the community, we've been talking about him for years. I think it's about time that people catch up with us. So what do you guys think about this news article? Should we let Prince rest in peace? I've heard that as a comment in a lot of different videos that I post where people say, just let him rest in peace. What does that mean? Does that mean stop talking about Prince? Does that mean let his music die? Does that mean forgetting about Prince? Never. I don't think anybody should ever do that. And you've heard it here first. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to check us out on social media at Princess Friend YT on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel, hitting the bell notification as well. And check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Princess Friend, where you can support the channel for as little as $2 a month. We'd love it if you did that. It really helps the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for coming. May you live to see the dawn. Love you all.